Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Peace be unto you. My name is Salam al Mariadi. I'm with the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Uh, it's our pleasure to partner with uh, STX Films for this uh, webinar uh, with uh, Mohamedou uh, Salahi, Jody Foster, and Tahir Rahim, um, who uh, were part of a movie that's coming out, and it's out in theaters now, The Mauritanian. Um, it's uh, based on the story of Mohamedou, who we'll talk to in a few minutes um, about his experience in Guantanamo as a detainee uh, in experiencing uh, detention uh, and torture and his ordeal in, in coming out uh, of that experience. And um, uh, it will be on demand, the, the film will be on demand everywhere on March 2nd. So we encourage everyone to go and watch the film in theaters if you can, if they're open, probably not, but uh, <laughs> by March 2nd, we'll, 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 uh, we'll all hope to get it on demand. And so let's start with, uh, with, with Mohamedou. Uh, um, I actually was invited to do an assessment of Guantanamo in 2007. And um, it turns out that you and I ha have, our paths ha have crossed at that time. I was told that, uh, and I was along with a number of other NGOs, non-governmental organizations, and I was told, we were told that we could not speak to the, to the detainees, even though we wanted to, um, and that we were shown a, 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 uh, a cell where it was very clean, and there was a Quran and a prayer rug there, and everybody was, was fed uh, very well. Uh, and uh, I felt uh, they were telling me um, a story about uh, cows who were being fed before they were being slaughtered. Um, and I wanted to ask you, Mohamedou, about that, that experience, uh, because as much as they try to uh, paint a picture of how humane they were with the inmates, uh, uh, obviously that, that was uh, far from the truth. And so in your experience there, um, how did you survive that ordeal? You're on mute. Oops. Thank you so much, Salam, for inviting me. Um, there we go. Yes, I mean, it's... Uh, it's very hard to describe prison for someone who's never been to prison because it's just like, you know, like dying while alive. You know, you are in a cell and you have no contact with the world. You cannot speak. It's like nightmare. You know, the nightmare when you are so scared and some, something or someone is attacking you, but you cannot seek help. You cannot speak. You know, you are stifled. And it was very telling when they told you you cannot speak to them. You know, it, I'm very reminded of the saying, I don't know who said it, but it said that democracy dies in darkness. You know, if someone cannot speak, that's a very bad sign, you know. And the, the promise that the government can decide, be the judge, the jury, and the executioner, we know that it never works because people like you and me, who have the background of being from a place where there is less democracy, we know exactly. I know as a child, I remember when my mother told me I couldn't speak. You know, I couldn't speak because she told me that walls could hear, you know? And uh, it's funny because it's like a prophecy because today we know that walls actually do hear, you know, through the surveillance and through this whole technology. And uh, so in, in Guantanamo Bay, there are, we, we went through different phases. Actually, when you came to Guantanamo Bay, it was not that bad. Because at least in my case, the torture stopped and I was treated like in, in a decent manner. Of course, I was not allowed to talk to my family. I was not allowed to call them. 
and I could only receive from them what the government approves after they take out whatever they want to take. And this is like exacerbated by the fact that we do know now through uh, public records from the government that the US government knew by 2005 that I was an innocent person, at least by then, you know, according to uh, the military prosecutor who took my case, who said that all agencies agreed that I never did anything to the United States in 2005. Yet I stayed there 11 years. And I think just like putting someone in prison, it's already enough torture, especially if they're innocent, you know? And uh, I can tell you this, and I have no bitterness toward anyone. And I completely and utterly forgive everyone because that's what my faith tells me. And if you forgive, you are closer to Allah. And uh, I know that because I felt it. Because when I have no, uh, when I held no grudge against anyone, I feel peace in my heart. And I feel happy. Even in myself, I feel happy. You know? And uh, I don't know how I survived. I don't know. You know, no, you remind me, remind me of the story of Prophet Jonah. And the metaphor of the whale is really when a person is in darkness. It's one of the darkest places to be is in, in a whale and in a, in a dark cave. And we all go through that darkness. And sometimes we lose faith and we lose sight of God in that darkness. But, but, but Jonah came out and, and you went through that phase as well. And it tells us that faith is not a constant. Um, it, it, it's every day we, we're going through ups and downs. And obviously for you is much more extreme. But you came out with a loving heart. And I think that is testimony to really the, the greatness uh, of people like you and of humanity to overcome uh, that. You know, I call it an ordeal, but to deal with torture and to deal with a, a obf obfuscation of, of the rule of law uh, by the greatest democracy uh, on earth, that was a mighty challenge for you. But you came out of it. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and speaking on behalf also of my family who suffered torture in Iraq. I mean, there isn't a single Iraqi family that doesn't know a family member or a friend who was tortured. And millions of Muslims throughout the world are suffering the same thing. So as you said, democracy dies in darkness, but this, this film gives us that light uh, to, to seek our way towards forgiveness and reconciliation and true justice. So thank you for that. Um, Thank you. And, and now I wanted to turn to Jody Foster. Uh, if you can explain to us, thank you for, for being with us. And, you know, you've said um, in the media that you want to be a part of things that uh, films that are meaningful now. How is this film meaningful for you? And why did you choose this one over so many other uh, issues that are happening in, in, in our society? Well, it doesn't mean that my other movies weren't meaningful as well. I think, um, but that I was a, uh, I really wanted to make sure that, that, um, that, that this, that filmmaking as an actor, that I was doing it um, in order to help people get better instead of worse. And um, uh, the way that we do that is through the experience of inhabiting the character. Um, I, I've never done other political movies before because sometimes I feel like they're not well written. Um, this film is really about Muhammadu's character and how he changed and how seeing, seeing the experience through his eyes. Um, and I think honestly, the most satisfying part of this movie besides being in the room with Tahar Rahim when he gave such an extraordinary performance, I think that the greatest satisfaction of this movie is that I think that it can be healing for Muhammadu. Um, the same way the book, when he wrote the book and he got it out and he was able to have people read the book and people say, now I know a little bit of what you've experienced. Um, knowing that the movie was being made, I think also accentuates that. And then hopefully, you know, being a part of the experience of, you know, helping them design the Guantanamo sets and saying, no, it was this paint color and not that paint color. Um, to be a part of this, I hope is some kind of healing experience as well. And that will continue to bring faith to the ideas of justice that are, are larger than governments 
you know, they're, they're about humanity. And I, I hope that this movie for him, this experience for him, being one of the crew members of the Mauritanian as well, um, allows him to have, to, to just increase his faith in humankind. And, and how do you see it affecting us as Americans? We went through 9-11. Right. There was a lot of hate uh, at that time. Um, we felt that we were victims right. uh, from that. And as American Muslims, we were victims twice because not only from the attack itself, but for being blamed collectively uh, right. for that attack. But how do, how do we as Americans get through this phase? Uh, you know, we, we still live in a post 9-11 era, so much counterterrorism. Guantanamo is still there. There's 40, 40 inmates uh, uh, in, in Guantanamo. Uh, we wanna see it closed down like Manzanar was closed down and make it a museum to remind us of this phase. So how, how does this all impact us as Americans? Yeah, I mean, as you say, I lived through 9-11 and the fear and terror of 9-11, those emotions that came up, something that Americans really hadn't experienced in such a long time. And um, the government uh, took that fear and terror and used it as an opportunity to take the rule of law and throw it out the window. And that's exactly the opposite of what, um, that, what, what we should do under those circumstances. Um, and I think that's really relevant to today, what we're going through today, uh, understanding how important um, the Constitution is our, as our foundation. Um, and, you know, that, that hopefully is what the film talks about. Um, it's true that the Muslim experience in America uh, has been really disappointing. And hopefully films like this and books like Muhammadu's um, will reveal the Islamophobia that, that, that has been kind of thrust down American's throat. Um, when you have a movie that is not, not just with a Muslim man as the star, but really inhabits his experience as a full human being, um, I think that that has, look who the cutie in there, that has more impact than anything else. Who is that cutie? That's, uh, I think that's Ahmed, right? Mohamedou, that's your son? Hi. Beautiful, yeah. Yes, that's Ahmed. Sorry for being distracting. No, no, he's adding. He's adding and enriching. Thank you. Thank you for making him a part. Yeah, uh, and you know, this is for his generation too. This is for, yeah. you know, his generation of uh, people who can can look to these movies and say, "I'm that's my face and I'm proud of that, you know. Thank you. Uh, Tahar, you know, you again, you get a lot of scripts that are given to you, you, you chose this, uh, you, you chose this role. Tell us what, what went through your mind when you first found out about uh, the Mauritanian and possibly playing uh, the role of Muhammadu in that. And what does that mean to you as a, as a Muslim and also uh, as uh, a member of our society, of Western society? I mean, when I read the script, I started to read it like uh, any other script, right? For the part and the more I would read it and, and the more I realized what Muhammad has been through and, uh, and that this movie was not about stereotypical things. So uh, in a professional way, I, I, I wanted to do it. But in the other way, which is beyond the movie is what it tells, the way it shows uh, uh, Muslim faces like human beings with feelings. And plus he is innocent. So it was very important to tell, uh, to remind people what we've done in the past so we're not doomed to repeat it. And it's, it's like for uh, Ahmed, movies are uh, testimonies for the future. And I hope when, he, when he'll see it someday or young people of his generation will see what happened for real. And uh, it's appropriate nowadays to help people who, uh, um, um, with, uh, uh, let's say, preconceived idea to change their mind. Because as you said before, uh, uh, Muslim people are also victims of those crazy people that are, you know, uh, doing those uh, things. Uh, yes. And uh, we suffer as well. And it's, it's good to, I mean, to, to say it to people so they can understand and, and just to find connection between Western and Eastern instead of uh, 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 differences. 
And the message that carries the movie is very, uh, it's relevant and it's, uh, it's very important. And uh, plus it shows that Islam is not, is not what they think it is. You know, it's, 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 it's peace, you know, it's about peace. And, and how, how did you uh, develop the role? How did you develop your acting to play the role of Muhammad? Did you, did you spend time with him? Were you allowed, I mean, w w was, were you able to spend time with him? I, I yeah. understand that in the various scenes you wanted the, 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 the cell, the, you know, to, to be of extreme cold, just like they had to deal with it so that you could uh, act, that, uh, act out that, that role better. Mm. Yes, I, I needed it. Um, when, I, when I finished the script, I was uh, like very pleased to be part of this movie, but uh, uh, I wanted to be part of the people who did justice to, to Mohamedou. You see, it was more, uh, uh, more important than the part. And to make it happen, I, I had to, to give my all to go full on. And uh, I, I, I don't know what it is to be tortured. Even if I read about it, I see about it, I need to get a feel of what it is out of respect to Mohamedou and the people who, who still are in this situation. And uh, that was the only way to make it. Yeah, otherwise it wouldn't have been uh, real, I guess. And, and we're here on this webinar in uh, partnership with STX Films. And the film, The Mauritanian, is coming out, is in theaters now, uh, and it will be available on demand everywhere by uh, March 2nd. So, inshallah, March 2nd. Uh, hope everybody um, goes and, and, and watches this amazing, compelling, and profound film. Uh, it really touches on American history. It touches on a Muslim experience. Uh, it touches on so many issues such as the rule of law uh, and torture. Uh, back to uh, Mohamedou. Um, in, 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 again, in terms of, of your experience, you know, I, I don't want to extrapolate, but I think it's fair to say that every Muslim feels, whether politically or in your situation uh, with the military, has to prove their innocence as opposed to a presumption of innocence, which is the basis uh, of our institutions. So how did you feel having to prove your innocence and did you give up on even trying to prove that? Uh, it's, it's honestly, it's very hard, you know, and exacerbated by the fact that I am a Muslim of Arab, Berber origin, and I am from Africa. Those are all bad things, you know. I think in baseball, you cannot do more than two strikes. Uh, you correct me. But I had like so many strikes in my life. I'm a Muslim, strike number one, Arab, strike number two, and three, strike number four, and with very bad accent, you know. Those are all bad, bad news for me. So, and- By the way, uh, you speak very good English. You speak thank you so much. much better English than some politicians I know, but go <laughs> ahead. Thank you so much. So, uh, I think it's only fair if all Muslims ask those crazy, demented people who want to do harm on others, if they create a WhatsApp group where they include us, I mean all Muslims in this group, and they say, you know what? I'm going to get something down in Paris or somewhere. Uh, how do you feel about it? At least we say, oh, shit, we need to get to cover and tell the police. And, uh, <laughs> but actually, you know, counter to popular belief in the non-Muslim world, we are not in one WhatsApp group. And we don't know what those crazy people do because I don't think they even know what they are doing. And one of my biggest challenge in Guantanamo Bay, and this a lot of people don't understand, is I am not going to be an extremist, no matter what, because that's not what my mother taught me. That's not what my father taught me. You know, they taught me the good thing. They taught me that I should be good to people. And I don't think under the word good 
is killing someone or hurting them, you know? And, uh, you know, like, you know, the, the whole philosophy of, you know, our tradition, it's that the, the whole message is a blessing to the world. It's not only to Muslims, to the whole world, you know? And uh, I refused to, you know, like to have this, uh, they, you know, they, they encourage us to have very big beer, not encourage us, you know, and then to be very scary so they could take pictures and show the world. You know, I, they took a picture of mine and when I was freed, I saw it, I said, oh my God, I'm afraid of myself. And I swear to God, I never, I did not realize when they took the picture because someone was holding me by force, you know, to take that picture. And picture, it's very, it's very important in the world, in our world, because, you know, German, they have a saying, uh, one picture is worth more than a thousand words or something like that. Right. And uh, proving innocence, it's impossible, you know, because, you know, it's, what should I prove? I mean, because they keep jumping on a lot of stuff. They said, you are millennium plus. Okay, they found out I'm not Millennium Plus. They said, you are 9-11. They found out you are not 9-11. They say, okay, you may have planned something, but it didn't, you know, it didn't pan out. And then under heavy torture, I falsely confess I did, you know, because I didn't care when they told me they're going to kidnap my mother and they insinuate they would uh, rape her, you know. It, that, nothing mattered to me after that. I didn't think about death penalty. I didn't think about anything. I just want the torture and the harm to stop. And this is not a military dictatorship. This is in the name of people like Salam, in the name of people like Jody Foster, who I can swear on the Quran would never subscribe to something like that. And we don't even think about the, uh, the uh, victims of 9-11. What is justice for them? There is no justice that the government just grabbed, you know, like random people and told them and said, okay, now we get you, we get even with those terrorists. And I say this, you know, on a limb, but, you know, it's not going to make me popular, but I think the whole concept of terrorism is a sham because terrorism is a way to uh, uh, collectively punish other people. It, it, it's fake. Like if someone kills someone, there are laws to punish them. If someone destroys property, there are laws. Why do you bring up terrorism as a charge? Because this way you can punish so many people, you know, uh, with complete discrimination. Right. You do away with the laws. And just, as you said, you become judge, jury, and executioner all in one. And, and that seems to be the, the mentality of those that promote torture. They, they don't care about the laws. Uh, or, or, or the rule of law. When the commander of, the, of Guantanamo Bay was taking us back to the airplane as we were leaving uh, the base, he asked us, so what do you think? Because he, he thought that they gave a very impressive presentation, like look at all the food that we, you know, we give them and look how clean the cells are. We give them a Quran and a prayer rug. I, I turned to him and I said, you know, there's a medical metaphor that they use that the operation was a success but the patient is dead. And, and that's how I felt when I, I was given that, you know, the, this, this tour. And, and I'm, I felt ashamed that I was getting a tour of something where there were people suffering in that base. Um, but that's how I felt uh, about uh, Guantanamo. Um, so back to you, Mohamed, just one last question to you about, about that experience then. How do you, I mean, how did you get to the point of, of forgiving and loving people uh, when so many people would just continue to, to bear that, that resentment? Um, I mean, we see it in our, in our society today. There's so much hatred in our society over people who feel that they've been, um, they, they, they haven't been given enough jobs or enough money or things like that. But uh, you uh, were tortured, yet you overcame that. Uh, there, and, and is it, was it your faith? Was it your family? Was it a combination? What went through your mind to overcome that hatred? 
So uh, this was not my first instinct. So uh, I, in the beginning, I was fantasizing about getting back and get even, getting even with those who visited a great harm upon my person. Because, you know, uh, you are after torture, you become someone else. I don't care what that someone is, but you become someone else. It doesn't matter what who you are, I believe. And I was just, I was in shock because when I came to Guantanamo Bay, I was saying, Alhamdulillah, thank God. Now I'm officially in the hands of America. You know, there is no, you know, no hidden cards, no more. I'm not in Jordan anymore. They sent me to Jordan. After that, they sent me to uh, Afghanistan, but now I'm in American hands. And American, I saw law and order, and I saw uh, married with children, and I know this is good, all good. And I was in for a very big surprise. And I'm telling you, I, I was shocked. I did never think that uh, American would really resort to uh, torture. And, uh, and so, of course, you know, I just want to comment on showing you Quran. This is all propaganda, by the way, because when I was tortured, I not only didn't have the right to have a Quran, but I was not allowed to pray. I was forcibly stopped from praying. I prayed in my heart. And they force fed me in Ramadan during the day so that they make sure I do not fast. And mm -hmm. even though I did not know, and this was like very, I tell you the irony, because I was in a place where I didn't know day from night, you know? And I only look inside the bathroom, and if there is a light inside the uh, bathroom, I know it was day, but the, the light to the bathroom, it's very short period of time during the day. And I, I know it was, they fed me, when they feed me, because I know somewhere, sometimes that was must be sometime in Ramadan. I know when they fed me then, I know it's daytime. That was another clue, it was daytime. You know, because it was yeah. not far from the light. And uh, so, and so I was trying to understand what America is, you know, because I, all, all, I know what dictatorship looks like. I know what a democracy looks like having uh, lived in Europe. But yes. I did not know something in between. So something in between was Guantanamo Bay. And uh, I just like start to, uh, you know, not to like to look at people with hatred, but look at them. I want to understand, just tell me, I'm listening. You know, I kept reading everything. I kept stealing and they got, sometime when they sleep, I steal their movies and watch them. When I steal the books, read them quickly and put them back. And then they give me books too. And they bring me, so I start making friends. And I just discovered American people are good people by and large. Yeah. And I'm not going to go back to my country and lie to them, said America is evil. And so I cannot do that because that's lying. And that's a betrayal to myself and to my people. And of course, you know, I, I pray, you know, and I, I try to be a better person through my religion and I meditate a lot, and I read a lot, I educate myself. Very important to educate. Yes. They say that, I think it was Truman. Uh, who, who took the decision to bomb uh, Japan? Is that Truman? Yes, Truman. Yes, so they brought him, the military brought him the, uh, the map of the target. And they said he was angry when they showed him one map, particular map. And they said, what's going on? And he said, I made vacation in here with my wife. You know, and because he knows the people, uh, yeah. he, he, you know, that saved them. You know, when you know the people, you know, I invite all Americans, they come to Mauritania and yeah. eat the food in Mauritania and stay in Mauritania, they will love Mauritania and they will the, never kidnap the, anyone. Yeah, the best way to deal with Islamophobia is to go and sit down with people and have a good meal. I think that just getting to yes. know the people would be the best way. Thank you, Mohamedou. Um, Jody, you know, the, the, let's talk about the other protagonist in this film, and that was Nancy, Nancy Hollander. You, you decided to play her role, and we wouldn't be here without Nancy. Um, it's people like her who sacrificed so much, her career, her reputation, 
uh, probably her livelihood to do what she did. Can you tell us a little bit about how you were able to identify with her and, and played her, um, played that character in this film? Yes, Nancy is a social justice hero. Um, and that's really been her mission really since um, her opposition to the war in Vietnam um, onward. Uh, and, and she has not been afraid to make some enemies. Uh, she believes that her mission is to challenge the government, that she believes so much in the rule of law and in the constitution that she needs to be there to challenge it, to keep it on the right track. Um, I love the character of Nancy. Um, I love her red lipstick and her little red nails and her, um, and her kind of love of fast cars and crazy things. She's a bit of a walking contradiction. Um, but I, I did change some things about her. I, I made her a little bit uh, less polite. <laughs> uh, my Nancy is a little bit ruder than the real Nancy. The real Nancy is quite lovely. Um, I thought that was important to see because we were all here just to tell Mohamedou's story, you know, so my character had to serve that story. Um, and I know how much Mohamedou has changed Nancy's life. And I know that she, when she came in, she was suspicious and defended as is correct for a lawyer. Um, but over the course of coming to know him, she really grew to love him. I mean, I, she genuinely loves him and more than anything else, she wanted to make sure that his story was told and um, that once it was told that, that he would be released because he was innocent. Well, you, you know, I, I saw the film is fabulous. So I just wanted to thank you. Uh, thank you for selecting this uh, of many films that you could be doing at this time. You selected this one along with others, of course, but uh, it's, it's a true honor to have you um, in this film and to help show um, uh, audiences throughout the world what, what Muslims uh, are really about. That we're At the end of the day, we're all human beings. Yes, uh, I mean, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch is in the movie as well. He's wonderful. He also produced the film. Um, he plays the character of the military lawyer, uh, the prosecutor. Yes. He comes with a bit of an ax to grind. He had a friend who died in 9-11. Uh, and, um, you know, he's, he's there to find uh, Mohammed's character guilty, to get the evidence and to put him away, perhaps for, for a death sentence. And he, he's a real character, Stuart Couch, who, um, a man of faith, a Christian, who, because of his faith and because of how much he cared about the law, uh, ended up um, quitting the government and saying, I can't do this. This is a mistrial of justice. Uh, this man was the only evidence against him was, was achieved during torture and I won't do it. Um, he is a, another hero in the film. And uh, some people have said, you know, that, that there's a, that his character has a, you know, that there's a Christian side to that. And I would say that the Christian side to the movie in some ways is as strong as the Muslim side, you know, that when we talk about the most important part of Islam is justice and the most important part of it, Christianity is love. Yes. And uh, this film is really about those two things coming together. Yeah, maybe someday we'll see the Christian side and the Islamic side as the same side. Yes. If they come from one God, if they Probably. believe in one God, then we must all believe in one humanity. So thank you for uh, articulate, articulating that so beautifully. Thank you. Uh, Tahar, we have to wrap it up with you. So you're the cleanup in, in all this, as they say in baseball. Um, so you got to bring us home. How does this help us in removing anti-Muslim animus from Western culture, which is so deeply rooted. I mean, we can go and talk about history and politics and, and, and a lot of it does come from Hollywood, uh, unfortunately, but um, we're moving the needle on this, I, I believe, but how do you see this um, um, be, you know, the beginning of removing some of the anti-Muslim animus that comes out of Hollywood and that is in our culture, unfortunately? Uh, I think I see this as a very good thing uh, that it's at least we can make movies like this that can help uh, people to think uh, differently and show Muslim people and uh, Western people uh, differently as they are, you know, that uh, finally we we're connected. We're all human beings. And uh, I think it's a good start. We will still need more movies to come or uh, books and uh you know, artwork, because I think that artwork speaks way much more than any, any uh, 
TV talk or whatever, you know. I mean, it's way, it's way more stronger to make a movie than go on, on a uh, on TV and talk for 20 minutes and then it's gonna be another thing and another thing and you don't even have time to digest it and to think about it. But a movie, a book, a painting, art has has to help yes. uh, to this direction. And, and I think it's a good start. And uh, yeah, I hope it will yeah, help people to think differently and, and, and uh, eventually help Mohamedou to, to travel again and see his family and be 100% free. You know, because it's something to, go, to come out of Guantanamo, to be released from Guantanamo. But then if you go to an open sky prison, you still have something to fix, you know, and uh, I hope it's going to help them as well. Well, you know, in the name of all who have been tortured, in the name of all who have been illegally detained, I, I congratulate all of you. I commend all of you for this wonderful production. And maybe someday, God willing, inshallah, inshallah. we'll bring Muhammadu to Washington and yeah. he can testify at a hearing where we will demand the closure uh, of Guantanamo Bay. I think that's something that we as MPAC can, uh, can help sponsor and, and try to get partners uh, to do exactly that. Uh, because th there should be no room for torture uh, in, in, our, in, in the 21st century anywhere, especially in the United States of, the Mar of, of America. So we, we, we make that promise to you, and we make that promise to tell everybody that STX Films has produced The Mauritanian, which is now out in theaters today, and will be um, uh, online uh, uh, by, uh, on demand uh, by March 2nd. Thank you very much for this wonderful conversation. And we hope to stay connected and uh, we congratulate you for the great film, uh, The Mauritanian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>